The armor archetype can be a bit difficult to deal with if you don't really have the tools necessary to deal with what they have. In this case, I somewhat do, but also I made a lot of mistakes. I just kind of want to point out here. So I'm playing Spying Nilfgaard. I, it's not particularly powerful, uh, but it's a really nice deck. I really enjoy playing it. It's very stable. It has a lot of variety uh, in options and dealing with uh, and getting win conditions as opposed to something like, you know what I'm going up against here, armor type where they have a very set combo uh, procedure, whereas I don't really necessarily really have that. I have spy synergy and a certain other kind of minor combos that can kind of be formed in a variety of situations. But anyway, uh, so this guy was a little bit, <laughs> he was getting a little bit tricky on me. Uh, I went ahead and used my assassin on that on that Redanian knight, uh, partly because I was just being a bit lazy, <laughs> and partly because I'm not entirely familiar with uh, what Northern Realms is really up to these days, especially when I'm just kind of just chilling out here on the casual ladder. Um, <clears throat> so I just decided, you know, I'm just going to get rid of this thing, so uh, to kind of move things along, get some spies on the field, and then drop the Redan uh, the brigades later. Uh, but he gets a little bit tricky on him uh, on me. He just passes, knowing that I'm gonna have to go at least one card down, which is uh, especially as Nilfgaard. That's not really that big of a deal. But generally speaking, I definitely didn't want I didn't want to try and go one card down if I didn't have to, especially since I went uh, I went second. So he kind of got a bit of a good a deal out of there. He went first. He was able to pass um, in a good at a good point, and he didn't really have to give up anything either. He just gave up uh, Redania Knight. Which isn't really a part of any of his combos. And also, I now I'd spend a mulligan on this roach since I didn't get to play a gold card, but it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> okay, so a big point of this uh, this body view that I want to point out is being able to bleed out your opponent in round two. So now that uh, I still don't actually know that he's playing an armor archetype for certain, so I'm just still kind of just playing out regularly. I'm trying to. Uh, it, right now, at this very moment, I'm just trying to discover what he's doing and what uh, what I can actually bleed out of him. Because again, as Nilfgaard, especially Spine Nilfgaard, I have a lot of flexibility to weave in and out of rounds, basically. Just kind of like go in a little bit, kind of explore, you know, feel, feel, <laughs> feel things out a little bit, and then come back, right? I, I don't have any of my combos set in stone in any particular round. Um... So this, uh, while bleeding out doesn't really work uh, in a lot of variety of situations, it does work out here. And again, I used an assassin on that Redania Knight, which was, uh, in hindsight, a mistake. Even, because again, like, I have, like, no information, which I think is kind of, like, the issue. Now I know he's an armor archetype. And you can't just say, oh, well, he's Rattavid, right uh, Northern Realms, they're all playing uh, armor archetype right now. That's not really necessarily true. And also, again, I'm just kind of chilling out in the casual ladder playing some casual games. Uh, not really worried about rank um, or anything like that, just kind of playing out. So, you know, they could be running anything. So I don't want to get too... I don't want to... I need to be prepared, right? Okay, so uh, in general, generally speaking, I should probably should have used my Assassinate on this 7th Strength guy instead of Redania Knight. It's a relatively minor difference, but if I do plan on having, like, a, a round go long, or just in general, like... Hitting that 7th strength uh, uh, drummer dude, whatever his name is, I still need to learn the name, uh, is generally better than hitting a Redanian Knight unless you're playing with weather, which I am not. So it's kind of minor, but still in the long run, I should probably be more. I should remember that this is a very common card, I think, in Northern Realms right now, and I should be saving my Assassinate for that one. In other decks, it's a lot easier to know what to play Assassinate on. Like I know, uh, like Tremor Ford's. Uh, Ethne, you can always use your assassinate on their a strength seer dude, far seer, and you you know you kill that off so it doesn't get up to like thirty strength or something crazy like that. Uh, so basically, again, uh, bleeding out round two, I'm just kind of playing out a normal round, right? I have a one imperial brigade. I'm not committing too hard into it. I haven't committed too much of my units. I did use a gold card so I could get roped out of the deck and have him available as a target for Azir. That was a big uh, thing that I really wanted to do in this round. Uh, just kind of getting this uh, this other. Uh, raw toss route. If you can actually hit that seven strength unit, that'd be pretty great. Generally speaking, I think I should be saving my. Uh, I was gonna say I should be saving my rot tossers, but when those seven strength drummer units are just kind of buffing things all over the place, it makes things a little bit tricky. But also, it does block. Um, 
Uh, having a raw tusker out blocks a potential bust, which is nice. Although I'm not even, I'm not actually certain about raw tusker's place in this deck because it has so much anti synergy with assassins. But I don't play a lot of assassins, so I guess it's not a big deal. And there's enough synergy with Imperial Brigade that it kind of overrules it. Um, generally speaking, so I think I also made a mistake here. Uh, I just kind of was looking for my out in this round. Um, and a big point reason why is because I had the spy out, which helped me uh, ca cauterize the going one card down in round one a little bit. Um, but basically, I wanted to... Ideally, I would have had him go one card down. But I don't really have enough tempo to do that unless I want to commit some of my win condition cards. I know materially I don't really have that, but in this case, a lot of the cards that I do have left are kind of more leaning towards that, and I don't want to use those if I don't have to. And also, I just want to go into round three in general because he's being forced to go first in that round, which is nice. I think I got enough out of him in general. This is like a slightly below average, I think, result of what I could have gotten. I think I should have gone further. I know I got his troll a little out, which is nice, so uh, that's one less... Now, whenever he wants to revive it in the next round with Shani, which is what he's going to do, he has to use it on Troll and not something else, which is nice. But I only got these drummers out, which is I don't think was good enough. I think I should have pushed until I got at least one of his uh, heavy cavalrys out, or at least more of his armor combo pieces. I think I, I, I think I ducked out a little bit too early in this round. And, you know, because it doesn't really matter what the points are, especially with this many cards in hand, it only really starts to matter when you get down to like three ish cards. Then it becomes a game of bluffs. But. In this case, I still had a lot of room to try and push him and bleed him and try and get this point total, this negative point total to be higher. Because that means he overcommits more. Um, although I I mean the options left in my hand are like uh my leader ability, which I don't want to use in this round. Um Vilgefort, which I don't want to use, Rain Farm, which I don't want to use, Ostier, which I could possibly use, but still it's a very good 10 strength silver body for next round. Uh Imperial Brigade, which I probably maybe could have used. But it does become a nice strength total in the later round, so it's okay to keep that. And then this five strength is what? Uh, that's not Yakim, is it? Yeah, it is Yakim. Okay, so Yakim, I want to put back in the deck because of Rain Farm. So really, I think I could have played at least one more card here in the um, Nazica Brigade and just hit something like the uh, the Spy. Although it, there's no guarantee you would have played an, uh, one of his combo pieces anyway. But generally speaking, it would have been safe. And also, I'm kind of saving that Nazica Brigade for Yakim. Mm, it's kind of hard to say but in general i just like this whole like sequence of events is less it's below average what i'm trying to look for and also generally speaking i want to try and pull nautica brigade through yakim because that's a better uh combo but I, I did pick up peter which is pretty big and i know like in a previous video i actually mentioned like Ah, oh, everyone should be playing Miracle Tailstorm. It totally is the case in this whole match. I was thinking, man, I wish I had Miracle Tailstorm. But I, I, I made this deck like the very start of the patch, and I have not changed. I haven't made a single change since then, and I'm probably going to continue to be to do that. Um, especially in a, a deck like this, in Spine of Guard, where every silver spot is pretty useful. The only thing I could even think about wanting to get rid of is maybe like Kalak or maybe Roach. Ah, oh, but they're so like they're so ingrained in this deck. It's they fit so well. It feels bad to try and get rid of them. Oh, you know what? I could probably take out Ockles or Ox, whatever his name is. So I found that Ox for some reason is actually not very good in this meta right now. Like you can lock Farseer. You can sometimes lock um uh <laughs> the card that used to be promote. <laughs> Uh, you don't really have all that many lock targets, and also drawing into him can be difficult sometimes, even though you have basically double Calvate leader ability. Hmm, maybe that's not right. I need to think about that more. It's just it, the feel, I don't have any stats to back this up, but just as a general feeling, I feel like I don't actually get that much value out of. Um, out of Ox. Which means that position is potentially loose enough to put Marigold Telestorm in there. Well, it's definitely worth considering. But the thing is, like, like when Ox does hit, when it hits two targets, it's so incredible. But maybe that's the thing. Maybe I don't need a double lock. I need a single lock. But I don't want to really want to use Cleaver. Because if you're using Cleaver, then you're... 
Ox's special ability as like a silver locker is that it gets two locks. Cleaver doesn't have that at all. It's just a a neutral. It's a vanilla locker. Other other decks have their silver locker, which also has an additional effect. So that even if you don't get that lock off, it still has a good bonus uh, tagged on uh, tacked onto it. But if Ox doesn't hit that second shackles, it's worse than Cleaver, and Cleaver is not very good. <sighs> so tricky. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm going to try Miracle Tailstorm. And if I feel like maybe I'm getting too overwhelmed, uh, overwhelmed by units, I need to double up. And see, the thing is, it kind of has like inter synergy with Nilfgaard in general, because if if they play something that has is double lockable, then I can just duck out of the round and go into the next one without too much issue. Hmm. Tricky, tricky. I think it's worth trying though, for sure. So up to this point, not really much, a whole lot going on. Uh, once we get closer to the end of this round, though, a big like mechanical play comes in that I want to showcase. But otherwise, uh, the the main point of this video is more, uh, so, somewhat a food for thought and somewhat bleeding out round two and some of my mistakes. So maybe you don't have to make those same mistakes. And also, it's really weird that you used Torrential Rain here. You probably just should use uh, Elder Thunder. Is that right, though? T Torrential Rain's going to get, what, 10? And now Thunder Thunder's going to get 7? Mm -hmm. I think it's close. But then he's risking... He's he's basically saying... Uh, he's saying that you don't have the Weather Clear. You're not running Weather Clear in this deck. I'm pretty sure I put at least one of those in there, right? Standard Bears? Maybe it's still in the deck, and I just never really thought about it. I think, generally speaking, I was just Thunder would have been better there. It's the difference between a floor of 5 value and a floor of 10 value. So going for the floor of 10 value will pretty much almost always be better. Yeah, I think I think going for Alzer Thunder, even if he, you have a guaranteed... Uh, I mean, if you can guarantee that they don't have weather, weather clear and you're going to get like 5 turns off of that, then you go for that. But generally speaking, I think the higher EV plays to go for Alzer Thunder there. Also, I don't like I made such a stupid mistake. I keep making this mistake too. So I put I accidentally put um I didn't even notice this in game. I don't know. I guess I was just looking away. But I keep making this mistake where I put uh when, when going through Azir, I will put um an, an emissary back in their deck because I keep thinking it's gonna go back into my deck, and having an emissary in my deck is really good. I need to stop doing that. And I'm actually even more surprised that he managed to pick up on the fact that I put the ambassador, the emissary back in his deck. And now he's just going to use it against me. So smart. I don't like what the hell. <laughs> oh, but then again, it, I'm sure it has a glowy border once you play the Reaver Scout. So he, he may have seen that, uh, that board. Yeah, that was so, oh, that was so bad of me. Oh, stupid. And he picked up on it too. And he was able to use it against me. That's very good. I like that. I mean, it was a really stupid play by me, but I like that I got punished for it. So now I know I really, really need to watch out and not do that ever again. But that's interesting. Like being able to punish a mistake like that is really, really weird because you would have to rely on the fact that your opponent is not playing perfectly. And I think generally speaking, that's not right. No, because he, he played the Reaver Scout. Oh, you know what? He could have played the Reaver Scout on his own unit anyway, right? Wait, so why didn't he just do that? Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> am, I, am I completely wrong here? He could have just Reaver Scouted his own guy. Oh, what if he was not trying to go for his own guy? But of course you're going for your own guy. So wait, no, he didn't punish. So he gave me free power. Okay, no, no, I got it backwards. If he wanted to punish me, he would have used the Reaver Scout on the uh, Emissary. And then he would have pulled a unit different than the Heavy Cavalry. Or he would have used it on one of his other units that um, at to pull the Heavy Cavalry. So in doing what he did, using Reaver Scout on uh, Emissary, then pulling the Dun Benner Heavy Cavalry, which he could have already done, he just gave me two free power for nothing. But generally speaking, that's something you can punish. If you were trying to get Heavy Cavalry either for... or you, You're either, A, trying to get Heavy Cavalry for something uh, from something else, like this unit right here. Wait, no, that's not right. 
You played on this. It would have, you would have to be getting a unit that is not already on the board. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. I got a little mixed up. Oh, this is the mechanical play I was talking about. So I just played my leader ability, I believe. Uh, and now you may be thinking, oh, yeah, I'm going to get this uh, this Menno, right? Menno's great. He's an eight strength good body. I can kill one of the other two, other two units. Uh, that 10 power is better than nine power, right? Except I also have Vilgar Forts left in my left in my hand. And that's also a really powerful combo. You can set up your hand and look at it to set up a Vilgar Fort by using your hero power or by using um, the four strength gold unit that lets you repeat the hero ability. I don't know what his name is. <laughs> so I pick Elmva Trader and I use Elmva Trader, put up this guy. Now, uh, whenever I play Vilgar Forts next, it's going to be hitting this for 24, which is ridiculous. The combo is so crazy. Menno is ridiculous. In combination with Infiltrator. But Infiltrator by itself is a 9 strength bronze unit, uh, which also toggles, uh, was all, which also has synergy with your Imperial Brigade. So it's like almost always it must have in this deck, especially with Menno. Uh, I mean, you don't even need Menno, and you could still get some pretty good worth out of it, but <laughs> you'd probably want to play Menno with it. Because you can pull off stuff like that. And also you can do things like um, you can use Infiltrator to hit like this, uh, this um, whatever her name is. I don't remember names. This, uh, I'm so bad with all these names. The six, six rank unit, and uh, and then you can use your Nausicaa Brigade on it, and instead of doing, instead of using it on like a Emissary, you get to use it on the six strength, so to gain a four, four more strength, and you still get uh, the four bonus strength by killing a unit, because this is obviously under seven. And then with my last move, I'm just going to hit his Dunbenner Heavy Calvary. And also I make a little bit of a mechanical mistake. I should have hit I hit this guy, I should have hit this one. Would have done a little bit more. But it's not that big a deal. Also I wonder if that goes through armor armor or if it hits through the armor first. That's something I need to test out. So anyway, that's it. So Big points. <laughs> I made a lot of stupid mistakes. Look at them, examine them, try not to make them again uh, on your own games. And two, generally speaking, you want to try and bleed out your opponent as much as possible in round two. I should have waited a little bit longer for him to use at least one done banner cavalry, I think. And three, uh, I didn't follow my own rule of adapting to the meta and using Miracle Hailstorm, which could have won me the game easily on this row here. Also, there's a minor, a minor thing where I could have placed my units a little bit differently so it didn't get as hit by Igni. But it knew it was going to happen regardless, and I don't think it was that big of a deal. But some, that's also something to keep in mind. People are still using Igni, of course. Although it's weird, because you wouldn't think so, right? Because if you're playing Igni, no, no, if you're playing Marigold's Hailstorm, you don't also want to play Igni. But maybe that's wrong. But anyway, thanks for watching. <laughs>